Inside the uh, engine room here of the Viking 60 at Marina Bayside in beautiful carrying bar and um, there's Seakeeper 6 changeover. So there's four Seakeeper 6s on this vessel and um, it's quite unique that Seakeeper can do that where they actually stack them in the way where you can have a 10 and a 6 or you can have four 6s to give you the same stability and it just works with what you can and can't fit in you know, tight access and tight rooms. So. First stage is we get the boat here on the hard stand where it's nice and safe. We put down all the covering to protect the deck and protect the vessel. Then we basically get in the engine room and start removing the parts to give us access to pull the sea keeper out. Let's take you down to the engine room and uh, show you where all the work's been done. On the port side here, you can see the big exhaust that comes out of the turbochargers and wraps around and goes in the exhaust mixer and out through the muffler. We've had to remove that exhaust for access. We also removed the muffler from the generator, which was on this outboard side, and all the coverings off the generator, just to give us that little bit more room for access and so as we don't damage any of the components as we remove the sea keeper. Once we have all the major components out of the way, then we uh, have the opportunity to build the system where we brace across the bearer and set it up so we can actually set up our gantry lifting system Gantry lifting system gets put over the outboard side, over the top of the Seakeeper gyro sphere. We picked it up, we moved it to the back of the boat, we repositioned it, and then we turned the gantry around where we picked up the sphere again and moved it across the top of the, the brace here in the center and again had to reconfigure the lifting equipment and set it up so it was across here on the port side and on the starboard, picked the unit up and we uh, put it down in the middle of the engine room here on an LVL that's uh, braced back off this center and back through to the uh, step there. Obviously, it, you can't lift straight through the uh, hard top floor here. So what we did was we secured back around the engine mount a couple of soft slings and a come along chain block. We shimmied the gyro down on the LVL that we had in position. Because the sphere is so heavy at 318 kilos, it's millimeter perfect and it's really important to have the right gear and the right people on the job. Then we have Shane from Shane's Cranes, who's the only man I'd use for a job like this. Millimeter perfect and the surgeon as we call him. As he picks up and takes the weight, we also take some of the weight at the front of the engine room and the gyro becomes suspended. And then with our headsets on and communication between myself and Shane, we slowly bring the gyro up into the air and release the pressure off this end, which allows it to creep backwards to the back of the engine room. And then Shane lifts up the crane and then we back this off completely and the gyro comes out through the stairwell. So we're uh, not putting any pressure on any of the components of the sphere, nor are we damaging any of the part of the boat. Then we lift it out of the engine room and swap it over and repeat the process, putting it back in. These jobs are always challenging. It becomes like a puzzle. You don't get a manual or you don't get to watch it on YouTube on how to do it. It's, you know, you're thinking on your feet and you've got to make it happen as it happens. And it's also really, really good for the young guys to, who are coming through to learn this sort of stuff. To do something like this where you've actually got to really think about it and put your mind into it and work out the angles and work out the weights and the position and do it all safely, of course. I think it's a great job, but I'd much rather be doing stuff like this than doing servicing. One of the wonderful things about the new Seakeeper product is the field replaceable bearings. So uh, a job like this you know, ends up being a lot less of a hassle where you can actually remove the bearings and do the repairs in situ without having to remove the whole sphere from the boat. One of the negatives, I guess if you could call it a negative <laughs> to uh, owning a Seakeeper is once you've had it on a boat, you just can't live without it. It's such an amazing product and it makes it so stable and so comfortable out there that when there's one not quite working right, you've got to have it fixed and you've got to have it right because the difference in your boating is just, yeah, out of this world.